body. Come on, let's stand together. It is so good to be at church together on this holiday weekend. Let's take a moment. Can we enter in with thanksgiving, with praise? Come on, with a grateful heart. God, we're so grateful to be in your house, to be in your presence. God, we pray today as we lift up your name, as we declare the name of Jesus, we declare that no one else is worthy, and we give you all the praise and all the glory. Come on, let the church say amen. All right, let's worship together.
mountains that stood in our way, but he came and he died and he rose. Those giants are dead now. because this is our God, the one who saves us, the one who loves us, the one who redeems us. Father, we stand so grateful in your presence today. Not only that you save us, but your love is everlasting. Your mercy never ends for us. And we give you thanks for that today. And our response today is worship. And we declare you are worthy and no one else is worthy. I am an instrument of exaltation, and I was born to lift your name above all names. You hear the melody of all creation. There's a song of praise that only I can bring. Who else is worthy? Who else is worthy? There is no one, only you, Jesus. Who else is worthy? Who 
songs and things not even there. 
declare no one else is worthy, no one else but Jesus. We give you all the praise. We give you a sacrifice of praise. Amen. I want to invite the prayer team to come at this time. In this moment of worship, this is where faith can be renewed. This is where you can remind yourself of the faithfulness and the goodness of God. If you came in today with a need, maybe you have a physical need in your body, just something that you need prayer over, we invite you, why don't you take a step of faith? Come, let somebody pray over you and be encouraged today. Why don't you come? Oh 
back from a full week of youth camp, seeing teenagers come from some messed up lives at home, from broken families to broken lives at school where they feel unseen or they're bullied, they're picked on from different types of substance abuse, all these different stories. And halfway through the week, I'm seeing these same teenagers speaking life into each other. Halfway through the week, I'm seeing them receive the Holy Spirit and begin to bring healing into the house, to begin to speak freedom over their names. Halfway through the week, I begin to see them just in tears to spread that love as one, as one big family. All of them knowing we're about to go back to our home lives where there still are giants to face, still battles to be fought, but they're going home with the name of Jesus. And that's someone in this room right now where, where you showed up today, you tuned in online, and you still have battles to face. There's still cancer to fight. There's still a home brokenness in the home. But take this name of Jesus with you. Take this name of Jesus. Can you just shout the name of Jesus right now? Shout it for your own self. Shout the name of Jesus. Nobody else can shout it for you, but you can. He's wanting to hear your own voice. Say, Jesus! Jesus! That's all it takes. No perfect speech, no perfect prayer. Just Jesus. 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 Lord Jesus, I thank you for what you're doing in all the lives in this room, God. As we continue to chase after you, we know your hands are moving in our world. You see every detail as we continue to seek your face. You're saying, I'm going to take care of every part of your world. Just keep chasing after me. I'm with you. I am with you. Do you receive that grace, family? And let the church say amen. My name is Spencer. I'm a part of this team here at Grace. We're so glad you could be here with us today. You're not just inside a building. You're a part of a movement. A movement full of grace and love for this world to see. And it's through you and me. We've got an amazing message from Pastor Scott coming your way today. But before we go into that, let's be a church family and say hi to someone you didn't come to church with today. Well, good morning, Grace Church. So glad we could have all of you here with us today. And for those tuning online, welcome to Grace Church. My name is Spencer, and I'm so glad you could be with us today. In fact, can we extend a huge welcome to our first time guests? Welcome to Grace Church. We are a part of a movement that seeks to bring the face of Jesus Christ into our city of Houston to those watching online throughout the nation until everyone hears and you can be a part of that. My encouragement to you is whether it's Grace Church or a church down the road, go all in, get plugged in because there's not a life better than being a planted Christian because a planted Christian is a thriving Christian where you can finally see the fruits of discipleship grow in your life and for those around you to experience by going all in with your walk with God. So get plugged in. Our ushers are here to assist you in this moment where you could scan the code on the screen or click on the moment online. And this is for us to get connected with you and to help you find your place at Grace. I also encourage you to stop by the guest suite. Any questions you may have of what Grace Church is, what our journey is all about, what that journey could look like for you, we're happy to help you every step of the way.
And as our ushers are here ready to assist you with offering, I want to thank all of our members for being faithful with your tithe and offering. Because of you, we get to continue to be that movement for every generation, from the amazing VBS we had to youth camp to also our missions partners, such as a mission trip to Tanzania that's happening in August that we're so excited to be a part of. And that's because of you and your giving and you entrusting God with your resources and seeing not only how he can be a blessing for you, but a blessing to the church. And so we thank you for that. You can raise your hand for your, our ushers to assist you, or uh, you can give online via our website or via text. We appreciate you for being faithful with your tithe and offering. Now, today's a big day. Today is Baptism Sunday. It's my favorite day that we do every single month where people such as Darrell, where you at? Raise your hand. You in here? Good to see you, my man. He's getting baptized today. And so many others, including teenagers coming back from camp as they publicly declare their walk with Jesus for the world to see. And so, Grace family, let's be a family after service and celebrate everyone making that declaration as they dive underwater, coming up anew, saying, this is now my life dedicated to Jesus. Are y'all going to be there with me? It's going to be awesome. And for those interested, we have every. Thing you need, and Pastor Scott will talk about that during your me- during the message. It's going to be an awesome experience. Now I got two announcements. First off, for all the ladies, Wonder Conference, September 20th through the 21st is going to be an absolutely amazing weekend. As you can see, we got our guest speakers, Lisa Bevere, Dr. Donna Pisani, and so much more as Pastor Melanie and the team just puts together an incredible experience for you and your girlfriends to come together, invite your cousins, your sisters, your family, your daughters, your friends. It's going to be an amazing time. There might be a dance party, but then there's also going to be awesome food, altar call, and just an incredible time for you to find your community that will love you unconditionally, but then also to just go deeper in your walk with God. So get registered as soon as you can and pray about who else can I help get them to come to Wonder Conference with me. It's gonna be a beautiful thing. Now, most of you have probably seen a giant reindeer in the lobby. I know your body clock is probably freaking out because it's July. Well, that's because it's Christmas in July here at Grace. Every December, we have Hope for Christmas, which is a huge event for us to provide gifts and blessings to so many families that are unable to provide those gifts to their own kids. And we get to help them show the meaning of Christmas and the love and the joy uh, to those families. And so Christmas in July is a chance for us as a church family to donate towards that missions movement. So you can be a part of that. You know, I know there's a lot of spending in Christmas. So why not in July go ahead and donate towards that so we can make sure every member of this community can have an amazing Christmas morning with their families and you can be a part of that movement. I'll go to grace.one when you click on the giving button for giving uh, on grace.one. You will be able to see the drop down that can show you through legacy missions the chance to give towards Christmas in July. In fact, we have a video about that right now. I encourage you to turn your attention to the screen. Merry Christmas in July. How are you all? You know, I'm so fortunate to be able to come down and sneak away from the North Pole and come enjoy your nice warm weather and see my friends and staff here at Grace Church. You know, I checked my naughty and nice list and everybody pretty much is on the nice list. Well, except for Spencer Jones, but you know how that goes. Anyway, I came to tell you that we are actually kind of behind on our production at the North Pole and we could really use your help because I know all about the program that you all do here at Grace called Hope for Christmas. It helps the underprivileged kids have a nice Christmas and everyone gets a nice toy and your giving will really, really speed that process up and help us out. So thank you so much for your generosity. Remember, Jesus is the reason for the season. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Yeah, man, exciting. I saw St. Nick out in the lobby, and other, unlike other St. Nicks, ours is a fifth-degree black belt. I think that's pretty awesome. So uh, welcome. I want to concur with Pastor Spence. We're so glad to have everybody here for the first Sunday in July. I cannot believe we're already in the seventh month. Trust you had a great fourth. 
And of course, here in Houston, the Gulf Coast, we are hearing phrases and words we're used to just a little earlier with uh, what's happening with the weather, but I'm just, uh, we also know that it could be anything or it could be nothing, <laughs> but it, either way, our prayers are for our neighbors down south and all of that, and everybody online, welcome, glad to have you with us. Uh, you've made our day special. We've got people online that can pray with you, connect with you. Uh, we want to do as much as we can to get grace to you until you can get to grace in person. And uh, I leaned over to one of the men serving today and just said, the holidays are here, but the crowd doesn't take a break. I love that. I love that people come to grace because you love God, love one another, and uh, I'm just delighted. I want to make you aware of something next Sunday. Uh, now, we're beginning a series today uh, that will it'll go various places. We're just calling it the Summer Playlist. Uh, I have a grilling and chilling playlist. If I'm the one grilling, I'm the one. It's my, my music we're going to be playing because I'm, I'm chilling while I'm grilling. Actually, I'm sweating. Matter of fact, that's probably what my kids would call it, is sweating to the oldies. But anyways, that's my, my playlist. I have that. I have other playlists. I've got a workout playlist. I've, and then the summer playlist is something we want to share. Well, here next Sunday, a very special treat. It's only about every two years he comes into the States from Harare, uh, Zimbabwe. But Bishop Tudor Bismarck will be here at the Humble Campus next Sunday at 9 and at 11. Uh, very, much, uh, very much a prophet, very much a man of God, and very much a friend of this house. Uh, God has used him for almost 29 years that whatever he has stated or said or felt or expressed in this atmosphere, it, it, it has happened. It's come to pass. So uh, we love him and cherish our friendship. Just want to let you know. And if you've never experienced uh, Bishop Tudor when he's here, matter of fact, one of the guys on the staff said, well, we need to roll out the organ and get it ready because they're going to preach with him. I mean, you just never know. But he's a great man of God and a great friend. So be aware of that. Well, we are doing what we're calling a summer playlist. And uh, what we're doing actually is just what's been playing. And there's some things been playing in my mind. In fact, I feel like we started this last month when Pastor Brett did such a wonderful job preaching on honor. And uh, <clears throat> it's amazing because it, you would think this is such a simple thing. Here's something else for you to know is as pastors and as preachers, there are times when we know we are, we're preaching sermons uh, we're, we're fishing, we're going fishing. And of course, people can be saved on any weekend, any service, but there are times that you're doing come and see sermons around Easter, come and see, come and see, because people at Easter and Christmas, times like that are more likely to come. Then there's times you preach to the church family and those are kind of go and think messages. Go and think, think about that, look at it, apply it to your life. And so I'm gonna do a, Go and think, don't go yet, wait till I'm finished, but a, a, a go and think sermon that I, I trust will challenge you because it's what's been on my playlist. I just want to talk to you about word power. Everybody say word power. Word power. It's just amazing that just words, our mouth and words, how they can carry so much weight. There are things um, this used to be a thing my brother would do. He would use his, he, he has a lot of words, but he would use his words and he'd come to me at, at home and say, dad told me to tell you, uh, which I was just gullible enough. He was just older than me enough that I thought if he said it, surely dad said it. And actually dad said nothing. I mean, cause it'd be something, we lived on almost a half acre and he'd be, dad said, you need to mow you need to weed eat everything, and then you need to weed the flower beds, which you weed by pulling them individually. Frank Jones don't go for it. You don't mow them down, you pull them. And Dad wants you to do all that, and Dad told me to roll up the water hose. So that, Dad told me to tell you that. And I'm like, oh, well, if Dad said, then I better get at it. There's the power of words. You put the name Dad in it, now that, that means something. So, so now you also understand mine and my brother's relationship. I, uh, I carry the load, and he tells me what Dad said. God, Dad said He's done that even a few years back as partners preaching. He called me on a Saturday morning. I was scheduled to preach. We were just a one-site church then. And he, he called and said, hey, uh, man, God has just really moved and, and dropped a word in my spirit for tomorrow. I really, really uh, feel like I've got something from God fresh. How do you feel about your sermon? I was like, well, well, 
Well, I woke up during the night too, but I, I was just a restroom break, bread. I don't know what he, so I guess we'll go with yours, you know, okay. You know, so that's, he's played the dad card, God card. Phrase we grew up saying as kids, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Couldn't be a bigger lie. The only bigger lie than that was my dad telling me this is going to hurt me more than it hurts you. That, I, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. I've shared some of this in the past, but it's, it's my playlist. It's just going through. And I've, after first service, I had some people talk to me about that. Because words, you do know, words can hurt. Words can hurt. So we talked about honor. We talked last weekend about gratitude. I, I, I just want to talk about word power. I want to get you to stop and think about what's coming out of your mouth because what's coming out of your mouth is coming from the abundance of your heart. It's out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks. So when someone says, I don't know where that came from. Well, yeah, it came from your heart. You've let it into your heart, and since it's in your heart, it tends to come out of your mouth. What about... Uh, the words that have hurt you in your lifetime. Maybe a cruel nickname that was put on you as a kid. Maybe you have a last name that is one of those names that is just a setup to be picked on. I, I, there was somebody the other day, and I can't, I'm not even going to try to remember what it was, but uh, uh, you just hear the name and you know <sighs> elementary school had to be tough on them because <laughs> it's just one of those names you're going to get picked on. You're gonna, I had a doctor. His name was Dr. Hack. I, I didn't go but one time. I just just wasn't a good name for a doctor, just Dr. Hack. Uh, and then, well, I'm, okay, get to my notes, otherwise my words will get me in trouble. What about a comment you heard about your appearance as a teen, especially middle school, and you're so fragile in your psyche, but somebody made fun of you. Pastor Spence has told us when the kids called him at school, the Oshkosh kids, because everything Mel bought him was the Oshkosh Bagosh brand. What brand was it? Oh, the Gap Kid. He was the Gap Kid. Well, news, you were Oshkosh before Gap. You just don't remember it. The Gap Kid. Oh, here's the Gap Kid, because he wore Gap, Gap. And I remember one, one day, we have school pictures of him wearing Gap, Gap. And one day, he, I cannot wear Gap anymore. Mom, I can't do it. Why? Because they call me the Gap Kid. And it's just what people will do. What about a less than complimentary evaluation by an employer? Or a... A Dear John letter or text now, text make us so bold. We'll say things with our thumbs that we wouldn't let come out of our mouth. But words have power. You with me? Words have power. They hurt us. Something spoken to you, something spoken over you, maybe by someone in authority. It could be spiritual authority, a pastor. There are people here who have church hurt from an elder or a pastor or someone who just spoke words. Either, either they told a lie or they just straight up used their authority to hurt people with words. Words have powers. And I don't know that we realize that the primary gateway to the soul is the ear. We're so visually driven. But these things... The ears. We talk about vision, 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 but in Scripture, the focus is on hearing, 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 hearing. Romans 10, 17, he wrote and said, so faith comes from not seeing, hearing. Faith comes from hearing. That is, hearing the good news about Christ. Faith comes by hearing. You know, um, during grad school, I, I discovered that during the Renaissance, there were some artists who would want to paint moments from Scripture. Like one moment would be uh, when Mary conceived the baby Jesus. And they would depict the fact that she conceived, and this is just all artistic, I've got one to show you, that when Mary conceived, that they would say she conceived through her ear. Now, we know anatomically that's not how it works. Of course, with Mary, everything was different than anything we've ever learned. But they depict it that she conceived through her ear because this is what we know happened in Luke 138 when the messenger, the angel came to Mary and said, this is what God says. You're going to be overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. You're going to conceive and you're going to give birth. Even though you are a virgin, Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you said about me come true, and then the angel left. So they depict it that, and I have, I will tell you, I've conceived some bad things about myself. 
I've conceived ideas about other people based off of words, words I heard, words someone said. Words. You can't help but get a cynical mind sometimes by the words people use about other people. There have been some tragic stories recently here in the state of Texas of powerful ministries, powerful ministries that have, have fallen and, and taken a hit. And what's, what crushes me most is there's so many words out there that people don't even have to know the truth. What's, what's that old saying? A lie can make its way halfway around the world while the truth is still putting on its pants? If that's not a saying, that'd be a good one. Just tell everybody, uh, my pastor says. But it's true. It's true. And so we hear things without verification, and, and, and it impacts us, and it conceives something in our spirit. In Scripture, you've got to remember, they didn't have the Bible. They didn't read the Word of God. They spoke the Word of God. They would go to the synagogue, and they would, it was orally shared, all the Old Testament. Matter of fact, you know God told, uh, told his people, this is what's going to happen. You're going to talk, moms and dads, talk about the Word of God whenever your kids wake up. Talk about it while you're fixing their lunch. Talk about it when you sit down for dinner. Talk about it when you put them down at night. Because as you talk, they're hearing, and faith comes by hearing. And they're going to hear from you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and Him only shall you serve. And they're gonna, it's going to get into them because the ear is the pathway to belief. In Scripture, they spoke the letter. Let me say it this way, vibration comes before vision. Vibration comes before vision. Sound comes before sight. And God said, and everything created was created by the vibration. We know that that's what sound is, that sound is actually the vibration of my vocal cords and then the vibration taking place within your ears and the anatomy of your ears and through that vibration. Uh, that's one of the most phenomenal things to me is those headphones you can wear that don't even go in the ear. They just, they sit here on your jawbone because all sound is is vibration. So I can still hear the cars coming by and you're safely able to hear a horn but while you're riding your bike you can be listening to music because the vibrations are right here. Beach Boys knew what they were talking about. We need to make sure we're picking up good vibrations. Good vibrations. Nikola Tesla, the inspiration for the name of the electric car, was known to be an absolute genius in his time. And he said this, if you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. Vibration. It's not just the words that have been spoken over you or spoken over me, but it's also the words we speak that carry so much power. I don't think you realize you've been made in the image of God and we're told to be imitators of God. Well, what did God do? God spoke things into being. Then he told Adam, you will now name the animals. And whatever Adam called them, that is what they are still known by today because words have power. And walking in the image of God with right relationship with God, Adam had that kind of authority. You too have been made in the image of God. I want to ask today, what are you saying What's coming out of your mouth? Because what you are calling things, what you are naming things, what you are saying about your trials or your life or your loved ones, you're creating a world. Your words create worlds. Thank you, son. This is why we often say amen during a message is, is because preaching goes two ways. We're preaching with each other, and that's actually the power of that. That's why they did it in Scripture. When a person says amen, they're saying, what you just said right there resonates, that vibration, I'm, I'm picking up on it. And so amen means yes, and it also means let it happen here. Just throwing that out in case you want to use one during the sermon. Just, you know, for practice. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. But let me move on for time's sake. The Bible is full of warnings about the destructive power of words on the speaker and on the listener. 
James. This is Jesus' half-brother. And he writes some of the most powerful things. J just listen, and I'm, I'll skip around, make sure you still get, get out on time. I'm excited about baptism happening in just a minute. But James chapter 3, the second verse, I want you to listen to this. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. I'll take an amen there. Amen. amen. We all, you either said it because you have made a mistake or your spouse, yeah. <laughs> For if we could control our tongues, listen to what James says, if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. This is a four ounce mass of mucous membrane. And James said, if you can control it, you can live a perfect life and be controlled in every other part of your life. Don't feel perfect yet? You might do an inventory of your words. Verse three, we can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses to go, even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. I just read not long ago of a forest fire in South Dakota started by a lady who had one match, lit her cigarette, and then dropped the match before it was completely extinguished. And 80,000 acres were burned up over the single match in an irresponsible hand. And James is saying, you can, it's a tiny thing, but you could spark a forest fire in your home, in your uh, workplace, in your circle of influence, at your church, you can do it, boom, that fast, like a match that's not quite lit, but not totally out. Right. And among all the body parts, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness, corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. People can tame all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, fish, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil, full of deadly poison. Sometimes it praises our Lord and Father, and sometimes it curses those who have been made in the image of God. And so blessing and cursing come pouring out of the same mouth, Surely, my brothers and sisters, this is not right. James 3 is a powerful chapter. This is a chapter that can turn your marriage around, can turn the rift around between you and your children. This is the thing that can talk, either work you into a promotion or a demotion if you figure out the power of the tongue. He said it's got destructive power and that it has great power. Words have power. Now, he said, if you can control it, you could be perfect. But he went ahead and said, you've never tamed it once and for all. James said, one minute, you're praising God. The very next minute, you're destroying people with your mouth. So since we never completely control it, can we at least become more intentional? Can we become aware to watch our words, to see what we're saying? King Solomon is said to have been the wisest man who ever lived because that's what he asked God for is give me wisdom so that I can please you with how I lead the kingdom. And he has over 150 proverbs about this. Proverbs 25, 11. Uh, proverbs 25, 11, The right word at the right time is like a custom-made piece of jewelry. Proverbs 13, 3. Those who control their tongue will have a long life. Opening your mouth can ruin everything. Okay, can I get a witness? Yeah. Mm. Mm. So when's the baby due? Oh, you're not. Oh, <laughs> 
Opening your mouth can ruin everything. Controlling your tongue, long life. When you read Proverbs and everything that is taught there about human speech and the tongue, basically there's four propositions. Number one, speech is an awesome gift from God. Again, our God is a speaking God made in his image. We are speaking people. And our words have power. And that's a gift from God. So it's an awesome thing that God has given us this gift. Number two, speech can be used to do good. There are phrases. All I've got to do is say just a few words and you know right where, if if I say I have a dream, no, no one's here going, well, I wonder what he's been dreaming about. You know exactly who I'm talking about and the legacy that was left by just the words, I have a dream. There are phrases, there are words that live on because words can be used to do good, but also speech can be used to do evil. And the fourth thing is only God can help us to use speech to do good. So many examples of how words are used and how people can, can hurt and that words can do good, words can give life, words can do evil. Think of this, and Hitler's book, Mein Kampf, for every word written in that book, 125 people died in World War II. That's word power. People bought into an idealism by hearing someone speak and reading the words that they printed, and lives died at 125 per word. Solomon was right, Proverbs 18, 21. The tongue has the power of life and death death. No wonder James said it's like a fire. Fire used the right way brings warmth. You cook things, it helps. Fire used wrong destroys. There are destroyed relationships based off of careless words. There are destroyed souls based off of careless words. When is the last time I have? When is the last time you have stopped to take inventory over what are the words that I am saying? Because words, when I speak these things, they have the power of life or death. Jesus was even known for his words. He's known by his actions and his words. Luke 4, 22. They all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. They didn't say deep words, didn't say uh, $5 words, and didn't say you needed a thesaurus. They just said they were gracious. The words were gracious. And when the gracious words were spoken, people said something's different about him. But isn't that just Joseph's son? John 7, 46, the officers answered, no man ever spoke like this man. Now, here's what we know about Jesus is he didn't get into deep exegetical studies. And in fact, there's only one time in Scripture it says he preached a sermon. It's the Sermon on the Mount. The rest of the time, Jesus told stories, and he would describe the kingdom of heaven as light, and he would use his words to paint a picture of a possibility that there is something going on on earth as it is in heaven and that people could be a part of it. He used his words to cancel death and say, come forth. He used his words to say, I don't condemn you. The only time he used his words like a flame that was sharp, it was against religious people, legalists, who had a lot of harsh words for others. Speak well. Speak words of life. Gracious words, life words, healing words, words of hope. I'm talking about over your loved ones, over your friends, over yourself. How many of you ever been failed by Siri on your phone? Yeah. There's two dangers. Well, there's, there's a lot. But one is, is if you dictate what you're saying and, and it doesn't quite understand what you were saying. 
So like Pastor Kevin Heron, my lifelong friend of, of 58 years, we've literally been friends for 58 years because our fathers and mothers were best friends. We, we've known each other our entire lives. So I was driving on the beltway, doing the work of the Lord, living good. That particular day, I, I, was, I was on my game, no, no major sinning going on. But if you were to read the text I sent my friend, because he asked me, so what are you doing about this summer in the pulpit? And I wrote back, well, I'm, I've got, you know, others. I want to let others preach as well and do stuff. And I'm trying to stay, my words were, I'm trying to stay out of the pulpit as much as possible. That's not what Siri said. Siri, <laughs> Siri rhymed with pulpit. And what it said to Kevin was, I'm trying to stay out of the rhyme with pulpit. And I looked at it, and he just wrote back, LOL. And I wrote back, said, no, you know what, that's actually true, but I, I didn't, that's not what I said, but I really am trying to stay out of that. Whew. Just this week, my wife and I, I, I don't remember who we, I texted on behalf of both of us, somebody, and I did a voice text, and then, have you had this happen, where you think it's done, and you realize it's still recording every word I've said? And we had been talking about lozenges, and we had been talking, I mean, we had talked several things, and that's not what it was hearing. And I thought, dear God, if I might be so careful to hit the X, hit the X, because if you hit send, you got a whole, have you ever done a reply all when you meant to reply to one? Well, that's an awkward thing. You, you just can't take that back. It's our words. Let me tell you what the words do. Words, they portray us or they can also betray us. Either way, they show what's in the heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Every person you meet, you've got the ability, the power as an image bearer of God to either speak life or death into them. Words are bridges, they're doors, they're walls, or they're windows. It's how you use them. Your personal happiness is determined by the words you speak. Proverbs 15, 23, a man has joy by the answer of his mouth and a word spoken in due season. How good it is. On the other hand, your words can destroy you and trap you. Proverbs 6, 2, you are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. Never, ever underestimate word power. Inventory your words. Are we getting blessing and cursing out of the same mouth? Are we speaking life, death? If our kids just started parroting what they've heard us say this week. <laughs> oh God. Remember one year at school, I begged Melanie, can we please pin on the front of the kid's outfit the words and opinions expressed by this child do not necessarily represent that of their parents. Well, my mom says, mom says that elementary teachers are actually, words betray you. Words give life. Words bring death. Words can hurt. Out of everything I've been through in my life, I can tell you if I go back to find the root of what hurt the worst, there are words tied to it. Right. Psalm 64, 3. They sharpen their tongues like swords and they aim their words like deadly arrows. Proverbs 18, I read it, the tongue has the power of life, death, if you love it, you're going to eat the fruit of your tongue. Every time you open your mouth, working in the lobby today just to greet and meet people, so much life spoken into me. People just saying, hey, I want to tell you how we ended up here. Or I got to tell you the story of my miracle and my surgery. I, I just got to tell you. And, and it builds us up. We remember faith comes by Hearing, by hearing. Proverbs 12, 18, reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. 
You know, it's that old saying, every time there's a fire, you've, you've got a bucket of gas and a bucket of water. You're the one that determines which you're going to throw on that fire. You can either put it out or blow it up with words, words, like shards of glass hurled in, in, in on the floor. It's hard to get around words once they've been spoken. I remember a lady that uh, was literally a gossip. You know, a gossip, sometimes in church we call that prayer request, but it, and it's like, how, I'll give you something to pray about, girl, that you need to pray about this. And really, you just want them to repeat. And this particular woman at this particular church, I knew the, the, uh, the pastor, his name was Jack Dehart, a wonderful man. Uh, she had just been causing division with her mouth. I heard a story of that happening somewhere this week. Not here, but I heard about that this week where a person's just putting questions, taking exclamation points, bending them into question marks, and people are now wondering and they don't know. And there's been, now we have a question to think about. And, and uh, Jack Dehart told me that this woman finally came to him convicted and said, I want to apologize for everything I said. I don't even know why I said it. Uh, I know it was wrong, and I know I made a lot of that up. And I just want to know, can we be forgiven and just move on? And he said, well, I can forgive you, but concerning moving on, here's what I'm going to do. We're going to go up to the bell tower, and we're going to step out right by the steeple. And I'm going to open up with a knife a down pillow, and I'm going to let the wind capture every feather and blow them everywhere they want to go. And when you've gone down and picked up every single feather that came out of the pillowcase that we just released, then we can move on. Because it spreads like wildfire. Am I a life speaker or a death speaker? Proverbs 15, 4, the tongue that brings healing is a tree of life but a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. Proverbs 16, pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul, healing to the bones. Every one of us have been hurt by words. Every one of us have hurt someone with words. You obviously can't control what people are saying about you, but you can control what you believe. There are things that happen in our childhood that we carry. That person may be dead and gone, but they spoke words that have become harnesses holding you back. Do whatever it takes to get that poison out of your heart. Listen to what Solomon told his son, Proverbs 4.20. My son, pay attention to what I say. In other words, listen to these words. They have power. Listen closely to my words, son. Pay attention. Listen closely. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. He's tying that in with words. He's saying, son, I, I'm telling you, son, above everything else you do, guard your heart. From what? Bad words or evil words. Now, I'm not talking about constructive criticism and being corrected whenever you need correction because that is a form of love. But I'm talking about, son, just be aware of, of people that just have poison darts in their tongue and guard your heart. Don't let bitterness set in there. Don't let it set in there. I grew up every day of my life hearing I was loved. Some of you never heard that. But it's still... When it became my time to be a parent, I had to decide, what am I going to give? You see, sometimes it's not the words you use, it's the words you don't say that hurt. When something's hurled at you, ask, is it truth or trash? Truth or trash? Truth or trash? Self-talk is the worst. The worst lies I've ever been told, I told me. And the most insulting things ever said to me to crush my spirit, I said to me. We don't guard our heart. We're certainly not guarding our words. Remember, faith comes by hearing. Let me challenge you today, and I'm, I'm almost done. Of course, you're not leaving right now anyways. <laughs> Guess we all gonna, here's a word, two words, hunker down. And I thought the weathermen said with words, this was tomorrow. <laughs> Catch your words. Change your words. Now, here's what's happened. Because of some folks on TV, this has been taken to an extreme, so we tend to shy away. 
But on the flip side, I have given you more verses than I normally share in one message on a Sunday because I'm trying to show you the Scripture has a lot to say about our tongue and about our words, about life and death being there. There's a lot said about it. So watch what you're saying. And rather than say, I don't think I can take much more, what if you, what if you, if you don't know what to say, say what the book says. That's why we keep pushing that everybody at Grace get into the Word, be a part of the Word, learn some of the Word, let it be a light, let it be a lamp. David said, I'm going to hide it in my heart so I don't sin. Just get in here. So instead of saying, I don't think I can take, take much more, what about I have learned in whatsoever state I am in to be content? For I know he who began a good work in me is able to complete it. What about instead of saying, my rebellious child is going to be the death of me? How about saying, my child is God's property, made in his image. They have been trained in the way they should go, and I'm believing now that they're old, they won't depart from it. I commit them into my Father's hands, and soon, I think we'll be at grace worshiping God together. How about trading, I can't seem to overcome this habit with, I am in Christ, and anyone in Christ is a new creation. Old things are passed away, all things become new. And God said he's faithful, and he will not let me be tempted above what I'm able to handle. Why don't you trade, I just don't know if my spouse will ever be saved, to God's not willing that any should perish, nor am I. I claim the promises of God that if I believed on the Lord, not just me, but my household will be saved. Rather than saying, I, I'm coming down with the flu, why don't we say, it's the Lord who declared, I will take any sickness from you. And I claim that by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Words, words. We must start talking God talk, what he says. Think of words or think of what, what Tesla said, it's all about energy, power, vibrations. It's about sound. I find in the word that when God told his people, now catch this, this is important. God told his people, I brought you out of Egypt, I'm gonna take you into the promised land. You know that, that's why it's called the promised land. It was God's promise and he kept saying, I'm gonna take you to the promised land, I'm gonna take you to the promised land. We're, we're all going to the promised land. But they would never say what God was saying. Instead, they kept saying, I don't think we can make it. Man, I don't know, we, we look like we're grasshoppers. I don't, I don't know that we can do that. Man, that's a long way. Man, I miss some of the garlic in Egypt. And, and, and they started saying everything else. And then they finally get to a point that in Numbers 14, you can find where God said, you know what? You certainly shall not see the land that I promised to your fathers. So here's the principle. If you don't start saying what God is saying, he's going to start saying what you're saying. Let me land came across an interesting study. I've shared this once before, but several years ago, it's still, still there, updated, much more current. This scientist, a Japanese scientist, Maruro Emoto. And Dr. Emoto is doing extensive research on water around the planet. Now, he's not doing it so much saying I'm making this scientific as much as I'm trying to be more of an original thinker. And what he started doing, he was, he was captivated by water and our relationship to water. And he began to wonder, how does water respond and act? I know it can be liquid, it can be a vapor, it can be ice, it can be solid, it can be liquid, it can be a gas. But what, what? and he just, and he was thinking on it. And so here's the, he started using this massive, highly intense uh, telescope or microscope. And these are the tests he would do. He would go to a water source and draw from that water source at one time. So it's one source, got it all at one time. And then he would take one drop of the water, literally one drop, and super freeze it to where he had a water crystal. Then putting it under the microscope he would magnify the image to see what was there. He started by wondering about, again, if you've ever seen water 
or even your soft drink and you're sitting at a red light and somebody's got a heavy subwoofer next to you, you can see, again, sound is vibration. You can see the liquid tremble. So he, he just started wondering about the vibrations. He's thinking like Tesla. So he went to one source, captured one, one source of water, one time, one vial, super freezes one drop, sets up speakers, and while he is microscoped and this drop has been fro while it was being frozen, he was playing heavy metal music. I want you to see, this is one water crystal Dr. Emoto shows how it's vibrating out to some heavy metal music. Now, he's intrigued by this study. Again, every bit of this is online. So then he says, we're going to go a step further. So he, same source, same dropper, another single drop of water, puts it on the slide. And this time he's got Elvis singing, since my baby left me and I found no place to walk. He played Heartbreak Hotel. And that frozen crystal is this. One, same source, same place, but how it responded to the vibration of Heartbreak Hotel. Now he knows something's to this. So now he comes back, same source, same dropper, one more drop on a slide, playing air on G string and super freezes it. And this is the water crystal having air on G string played, what it looked like, how it responded to the vibration that we call sound or music. He tried one other song. Same source, same dropper, one drop, and now he's playing Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Water crystals responding to vibrations. Then he went from s s music to just words. Same source, same time, same day, one small micro drop of water, and as it is being super frozen, he is speaking into the microphone through the speakers, just saying this word over and over, evil, evil, evil. And that's how the crystal responded to that vibration. Then he, he goes beyond that, and now he starts speaking like authority people have done to some of us when we were younger, and he speaks, he's talking to water, and now he starts saying, you disgust me. You disgust me. And I, every time I look at that one, I almost see a malformed individual right in the middle being hit with the words, you disgust me. He tried another negative phrase, speaking to the water, same source, same day, same spot. He was saying, you fool, you fool. And the water responded to that vibration in such, a, such an odd way. So then he changes and he goes to kind words. The, he says something you should try. He says, thank you. He's talking to water. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And this is how the water crystal responded to the words. Thank you. Thank you. Then he tries another word. He just says, peace. 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 Same source, same day, same time, same doctor. He does one more drop, he, and he really stretches. He says, angels, angels, angels. I know you're thinking, now what does this have to do with word power? Listen to me. It has everything to do with it when you remember that every adult in here is comprised of 70% water, and every infant is 90% water. And there are times that we don't think our words matter, but at least 70% of a person is reacting. They may not show anything on the outside, but inside the greater portion of them, the 70% of them is reacting either positively or negatively to the words and the power that are coming out of your mouth, the vibrations you are giving. Yes, your words matter. They matter a whole lot. What you say to a child, what you say to a spouse, what you say brother to brother, friend to friend, it does matter. I'm gonna tell you what motivates us to keep preaching, even though sometimes people just look like they're not even listening and are not going to respond. We know that the word, the word of God never comes back void. And maybe they don't make a move to the baptistry or make a move to the altar, but I know 70% of them at least is saying, oh God, I feel eternity in what he was saying. Your 
words have power. Last thing about words. So glad it's Baptism Sunday. Is you know how we're saved? Words. You talk yourself into it. Now, I don't mean you can talk your way. There's two ways to use that. I have talked my way behind, I'll never forget when the Rockets won in 1995 uh, the uh, championship. I talked my way into the media room. I had my dad's in 1985. You wear the VHS recorder here, and then I had the camera, and, uh, and I went up to everybody, and I, they said, who, who are you? I was, home family entertainment, home family entertainment. And I've got videos of uh, me and Hakeem and asking people questions and just get, I was right, I, I've talked myself into a lot of stuff. I know that's probably shocking you. You think, well, he's, that, he's, he has so few words, but it's true. You can't talk your way into heaven, but you do talk your way saved. I'm just going to read it to you. Romans 10. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, listen to me, at the moment you do it, over 70% of you is already going, Yes. And believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Would the baptistry, uh, baptism team come? And then I want you to catch that verse 12. For there is no distinction I don't know who told you you were less than for any reason. It could be gender, it could be ethnicity, it could be a learning a challenge, whatever it was. I, I, I don't know, but listen to what happens. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you will be saved. For the scripture says in verse 11, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek for the same Lord over the rich is rich is all who call upon him. Same God, no respecter. Doesn't matter what anyone else said, what he says is, no, you're my child. You, you believe on me, you have confessed with your mouth and you believe in your heart. Verse 13, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Word power, word power, word power. Somebody didn't come to church planning on being baptized, and, and I get that, but I cannot think of a better time than the beginning of the seventh month of this year to say right now, I've, I've talked about the loser I am. I keep saying I need to change, but I've not engaged the power that happens when I start saying what God is saying about me. Today's my day to surrender my life. Today's my day to take on the name of Jesus through baptism. Declare my faith according to Matthew 28, 19 and Acts 2. I'm, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm fulfilling Jesus' words. I want to ask everybody to stand and I'm about to dismiss. But first, I want to give a chance if the uh, Baptist, baptism team to start walking down the aisle slowly. They are serving as guides. Just step out where you are and follow them if you want to be baptized. Grab your spouse, your friend, just tell them, go with me, because this is a public declaration of an inside work. Yes, 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 just make your way, make your way. Follow them out. I thank God for the 35 at nine, and I believe that's, there's that many or more now. That's it. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the right time to take on the name of the Lord. Yeah, we're giving you all just a moment. Just step out and turn right. They turn right and they'll guide you. We have private dressing rooms. We have swimsuits for everybody. You didn't come prepared, but we did. We have everything we need to help you leave here looking like you do now, but not feeling like you do right now. Or actually, on a day like today, we're all going to get wet. <laughs> Anybody else? As they're going, I want to say to everybody else still in here and everybody online, do inventory on your words. Record yourself. Literally, you ought to record yourself. And go back and look. Or just ask, if you if you married, that God has built you an accountability partner where you can just look and ask, how am I, what, what's, what am I doing with my words? And let them tell you truthfully. Be honest with you. 
Several are poisoned. Some life, some cursing, same mouth. Guard your heart by watching your words. Now let me speak some words over you right now. Here's my prayer for every one of you. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his perfect peace.